Hi and hello to everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see about, uh, about the half wave and full wave rectifier. The agenda for this lecture is we will be seeing about the overview of AC to DC conversion. We will be seeing looking about the AC half wave rectifier, full wave rectifier. Here, in full wave rectifier will be taking the, both the cases like bridge type and center tap transformer type. Then we will be computing the average value of the output that is the rectified output. Then we will be seeing what is peak inverse voltage. Welcome to the lecture. This is the overview of AC to DC conversion. Right? We know the household power supply which we will be getting at the plug point. Right? That is your AC alternating. Okay. But we know our electronic devices, all electronic devices. I can say like mobile phone, laptop, television, okay, even our air condition, air conditioner, fridge, everything requires DC supply for its operation. The DC supply, we know it is a constant supply, a constant volt. This is a simple a rough diagram I have given, right? Which is capable of regulating of 5 volt, right? For a, for example, this entire circuit will be in your adapter or charger. We will say for a mobile phone, we will be converting the 220 volt AC power supply into 5 volt. Okay, that's a typical example I can give for a mobile phone. We need a charging voltage of 5 volt DC. For a laptop, we will be needing around. The laptop I am using, the Lenovo laptop, I need 20 volt DC supply. Okay, so this entire setup will be there in your charger or I can say adapter. Okay, that will be convert your AC to DC. Right? You know, uh, we, we know what is a transformer. Right? Transformer is a passive device which will step up or step down the voltage. Right? I have 230 volt AC. This is your RMS value. I by suppose I am using a 10 is to 1 transformer. 10 is to 1. What is the meaning? That is I have 10, 10 times more number of turns in the primary of the transformer when compared with the secondary of the transformer. Suppose I have 100 turns here means I will have only 10 turns in the secondary. Okay, so 10 is to 1 transformer. This transformer, this sort of transformer is called step down transformer. Okay, so step down transformer will step down the voltage. So 230 volt RMS value will be stepped down to I can say 23, 10 times is reduced. Okay, 23 volt RMS. This is 230 volt RMS. Input is 230 volt. This is what we will be getting in the plug point, right? Okay, so I am using 10 is 1 transformer means it is getting stepped down to 23 volt RMS value. Then we need a fuse. Why the fuse is required is suppose a more current, more suppose the voltage is increasing, more current will be flowing. In the, uh, the current beyond 1 ampere is flowing, this entire setup will get affected. Okay, the diode will get breakdown. So to protect that, what we will be using, we will be using, uh, using a fuse. Okay, such that the current can flow through up to only 1 ampere. If there is 1 ampere, this fuse will get breakdown, will get opened up. Okay, so this entire circuit can have the maximum current of only 1 ampere. Okay, then we know this is your uh, full wave rectifier using bridge type circuit. I will be seeing this clearly in the coming slides. Then, uh, if you look at the output, see we can see this alternating is converted into a fully a positive wave. That's we say pulsating AC. That's we say full wave rectified output. Full wave rectified output. That is the, at this point we have this waveform. Then we have a smoothing circuit. Smoothing circuit is nothing but uh, another name for smoothing circuit is filter. Okay, if you look here, the output here is pulsating. That is like a pulse. It is always in the positive side, right? So uh, what I'm, uh, I need a circuit. I need the output to be a constant one. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a filter. Filter of so many type. Like I can say like inductor filter, capacitor filter. And I can say like pi, pi type filter, T type filter, so many type. But here I am using only a simple capacitor. Based on the capacitor charging and discharging, I can control the waveform, right? If you look at this waveform, okay, I will, uh, yes. See, your capacity is charging now. This observed is green line. Capacity is charging, then capacity is slowly discharging. Again, charging, then discharging. Charging, discharging, right? Okay, that is this waveform, right? 
So the output of the filter or the smoothing circuit will be will be of this type. Okay. So initially charging, then it will be nearly staying constant. Then I will use a regulator circuit. Okay. Regulator we know which is used to maintain. Uh, it is used to maintain uh, constant uh, DC. Maintain constant DC output. Why, why it is necessary to maintain a constant DC output? Because our electronic devices needs a constant volt of, as I said earlier, for a mobile phone we need 5 volt, for a laptop I need 20 volt for its charging. Okay. So I have to maintain that voltage, right? So that's why we go for regulator. A regulation can be uh, can be attained using um, like IC. IC sound is not 5 is there. This IC will give you whatever may be the input voltage that is greater than uh, 5 volt. It will be always maintained at 5 volt, right? Okay. Now, or else I can go for a zener diode circuit. I have I have given another video how to use a zener uh, diode to keep get an voltage of 5 volt. There are so many ways to get a regulator circuit. This is one of the simplest regulator circuit. I see sound sound eight sound eight not five. Okay, so this entire thing will be there in your charger. We will saying or we will be saying as an adapter. Okay, so this is an overview of AC to DC conversion, right? So okay, right. Now we will be seeing about the half way rectifier. If you go by the name, half way rectifier will be rectifying only the half of the cycle. Okay, so this is a simple half way rectifier. We have a diode. We know in a diode, this is your anode, this is your cathode. If you put K or C, okay, because C we will use for capacitor, so most books we will use for cathode as K. Okay, and anode, anode is your P type, cathode is N type. So this is your P and N, this is your diode. Okay, now when the input is positive, so this is an alternating waveform, right? The positive side, this is a positive half, right? Because you can, you can see the input is positive here. So this is your negative half. You can see the input is negative, right? Once you give it to the, this is your half wave rectifier circuit. We know your diode is forward biased when the P is connected to positive or else I can say when the anode voltage, anode voltage is greater than cathode voltage. Then I can say my diode is forward bias. When it is forward bias means it is going to act as a closed switch. What is anode? Anode is nothing but P. Cathode is nothing but N. Okay. We will take the two cases, right? One is a positive half cycle, another is negative half cycle. During positive half cycle, when it is a positive half, when the time is between 0 and T by 2, the time is between 0 and T by 2, it is positive half. The time is between t by 2 and t, it is in the negative half. Okay, first we will take the positive half cycle, that is the time is between 0 and t by 2. 0 and t by 2 means what is happening? My diode is forward bias, so I can replace the diode with the closed switch. So, whatever the input voltage will be coming to the <coughs> coming to the output voltage. Okay, so we will output also, we will get the same waveform, positive half waveform for the time 0 to t by 2. Next. We will look for the negative half cycle. Negative half cycle, negative half is between T by 2 and T. Okay, so what is the negative half cycle is between T by 2 and T. In the negative half cycle, we can say it is positive here, so the diode gets a reverse biased. As so you can say anode is kind of coming and getting a negative voltage, so it is the open circuit. Reverse bias means diode is open, so input signal will not go to the output because it is open here, so the output is 0. So between the time T2 and T, the output is 0. So together, if you look at both the waveforms, both the half cycle, both the, both the positive and negative half, for the positive half output, uh, I will get same as the input. During negative half of the input, output is 0. Similarly, for the next positive half, I will get the same output. For the next negative half, I get the output zero. So this cycle, this will be repeating cycle after cycle. So I have only a positive half cycle. So uh, the output for the negative half it is zero. That is why it is called half wave rectifier. Okay. Next we will see why the DC value. What is the DC value is zero? Why the DC value is 0 0.318 for a half wave rectifier waveform? We'll derive that. Okay, right. See, understand that 
the DC value, DC is nothing but average, constant, okay, DC value of the input voltage, uh, why it is zero, we are going to derive that, right, so this is your input waveform, we know input waveform is going to repeat, the time period is given as T, the entire time period is T, okay, entire cycle time period is T, so half of it is T by 2, right, so how will you find the average value, average value of this, this blue color shading in the positive of negative half, by using common sense I can say this is positive half, this is negative half, this is positive same area, so it's zero, we are going to derive it mathematically, that's it, right, so how will you find the average value, you will find out the area of this entire, the zero to T, then we will be divided by the time period, that is what I am doing, one by T, and I will integrate from zero to T, the waveform is a sine waveform of peak value Vm, so sine omega naught T dt. You know what is omega naught? That is your, um, um, I can say, uh, frequency is equal to 2 pi f. That's radian frequency, 2 pi f. Okay, what is f 1 by t? So omega naught equal to 2 pi by t. t is the fundamental period. Right. Once you integrate uh, Vm sin omega t on t, I will get minus cos omega naught t divided by omega naught. Okay, next I am uh, going to take the minus outside, substitute the upper limit and lower limit in place of omega naught, I am substituting 2 pi t. Okay, in place of omega naught, I have substituted 2 pi by t. So upper limit is t, here the upper limit is lower limit is 0, so I have minus. Okay, so t t gets cancelled out. So it is minus Vm by 2 pi, so it is cos 2 pi minus cos 0. What is cos 2 pi? Cos 2 pi is 1. What is cos 0? It is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So I have proved that the DC value or the average value of an input signal, a sinusoidal input signal is 0. Next we will see the, what is the average value of the half wave rectified waveform. This is very important, right? This is our objective to find the average value of the half wave rectified waveform. <coughs> okay, let us see the derivation now. This is very important, right? Okay. So look at the, for a half wave rectified waveform, um, it will proceed in the same way as the, as the earlier case. So yeah, the period is 1 by t, 0 to t, Vm sin omega on t. If you observe the waveform, let's call it down. If you observe the waveform, <coughs> for V0, 0 to t by 2, what is this time? This time is t by 2. So, 0 to t by 2, signal is present. Between t by 2 and t, this time is t. The signal is absent. Okay. So, I am going to split the integration into two segments. I am going to split the integration into two segments. 1 by t, 0 to t, Vm sin omega naught t dt. So, 0 to t by 2, I have the waveform. That is Vm sin omega naught t dt. And between t by 2 to t, I am splitting it. Okay. This integration is nothing but finding the area, right? I will find the half of the cycle area. Then, remember, uh, rem remaining half is t by 2 to t. That the signal is absent, so I put 0 dt. So, this time is 0 now. Again, I am just integration process. So, the limit instead of t, we have t by 2 for half cycle, t by 2. This you can follow. You can pause the video and you can follow, right? So, in substituting the limits, uh, again, omega naught is 2 pi by t. Upper limit is t by 2. Lower limit is... Uh, 0, okay, so t, t, 2, 2 gets cancelled, so cos pi, so cos 0, cos pi is minus 1, cos 0 is minus 1, so minus is there, so 2, 2 Vm by 2 pi, 2, 2 gets cancelled, Vm by pi, okay, or uh, I should, should be like point, uh, point uh, 0.1 by pi is 0 0.318 Vm, so this is the DC value of F, very, very important derivation, this is the DC value of the half wave rectified output. Okay, so 0.318 into peak value of the input signal. That is a peak, Vm is the peak value of the input signal. Okay, this you can check. You can take your multimeter. In the multimeter, we can measure both AC and DC. Okay, put your, uh, connect the multimeter in the DC, uh, rotate the knob in DC to DC. Then you measure the waveform. Okay, if the input signal is uh, peak value, of the, suppose the input signal is, I can say, uh, like a 20. Peak value is 20 to minus 20. So, what is Vm? Vm is 20. I am giving the signal to a half a rectifier. So, the output will be 0 to 20. Then, again, a negative, a negative half, there won't be any output. So, okay. So, this is the half a rectified output. 
Okay, so, so what is the DC value? If I connect the multimeter in uh, DC mode or operate the multimeter in DC mode, it will be the output will be showing as VDC equal to 0.318 into 20. So this value you will be getting. You can check in your laboratory. Okay. Fine. Okay, now next we move into full way rectifier. Now we will see about the cutting voltage, right? I have said already that when a diode is conducting, it is acting as a closed switch. This is ideally speaking, it is actually closed switch. But practically, for a diode to conduct, it needs a minimum voltage for its conduction, right? That voltage is called cutting voltage. Minimum forward biased voltage required for conduction is called cutting voltage. Okay. For a silicon diode, the cutting voltage is 0.7. I say the cutting voltage is Vt, right? So during positive half, it is not anymore a closed switch. There will be a voltage drop of 0.7 or a voltage drop of Vt. Okay. So if you look from this side, what is V0? V0 is equal to input voltage minus Vt. Look from this side. You got to look from here. It is minus Vt plus Vi. So the output will be output will be Vi minus Vt. V, Vt we know is a cutting voltage for silicon it is 0.7 volt approximately for germanium diode it is approximately 0.3 volt right so this is due to that cutting voltage initially it, even for it, it needs a minimum voltage for its operation generally we will ignore the cutting voltage because assume the you know, input voltage is our amplitude is 20 volt cutting voltage only 0.7 so we will take minus 20 or minus minus 20 is very close to minus 19.3 okay so so 20 is, uh, I mean, the input voltage is 20, okay, peak value is 20, the cutting voltage is minus 0.7, okay, or 0.7. So, I can say 20 volt is very closer to 19.3. So, generally, we will ignore, okay, but practically, there will be definitely a voltage drop of 0.7, right? So, in case of practical diode, practical, practically speaking, what about the DC value? I said that Vm by I. Here, I will bring the cutting voltage also, Vm minus Vt by pi. So, 1 by pi is 0 0.318, Vm minus Vt. Most cases, we will ignore the Vt. Practically, there will be a very small Vt. That is, value for germanium is 0 0.3, for silicon is 0 0.7. This is the effect of the cutting voltage on the output. Next, very important is peak inverse voltage. Okay. Peak inverse voltage is nothing but it is the maximum reverse bias voltage that the diode, diode can withstand without getting into the breakdown region. Right. Okay, what is breakdown region? When the forward bias, diode will be conducting. When the reverse bias, diode will not conduct. But what happens the depletion region when I, when I keep on reverse biasing? Depletion region will keep on increasing. At one stage, at a higher reverse bias voltage, diode will get permanently damaged. Okay, so I should operate the diode within the peak inverse voltage. That is the maximum reverse bias voltage that a diode can withstand without getting into the breakdown region. If it is entering into the breakdown region, diode will get permanently damaged. Okay. So, if a half-way rectifier, when the diode is not conducting, it is open circuit. When it is open circuit, the current is zero. So, there won't be any voltage drop here. Right? Okay. V0 is zero. So, the voltage across this point is nothing but Vm. So, peak inverse voltage should be definitely greater than the Vm. Vm is the maximum voltage of the input signal. Okay, input voltage. Right? So, the half a rectifier, how you will be selecting a peak inverse voltage? Assume, yes, the silicon diode you are purchasing is having a peak inverse voltage of 30 volt. Peak inverse voltage of 30 volt. Okay. You are giving an input signal of Vm. Vm is 60, minus Vm is minus 60. Okay, now what happens? For a, your diode will get into breakdown because peak inverse voltage is 30, Vm is 60. Okay, so diode will get permanently damaged during the negative half. Okay, so you have to throw the diode. You have to throw the diode in the dustbin, right? So what do you have to do? If you are going to have an input signal of 60 volt, you should use your diode whose peak inverse voltage is greater than or equal to 60 volt. You should purchase a diode which is which is having a peak inverse voltage like 80 volt or 100 volt. Then you can operate the diode in for this waveform. Okay, that is the importance of peak inverse voltage. Right. Next, you can try out this problem. Right. So, I see. 
here as i mentioned earlier this is your anode this is your cathode the p and n okay it is very different from the circuit half a circuit we have seen before right here what i have done is just i have changed the diode direction it was anode this side and cathode here now i change the direction so what happens during positive half it will not conduct during negative half it will conduct okay the question is draw the output waveform and compute the pdc so ideal diode means what look here see here, negative half means i have put plus here i have put minus here during negative half it is acting as a closed switch so 0 to t by 2 the output is 0 between t by 2 and t okay input is, output is equal to input again during positive half output is 0 during negative half it is conducting okay so during positive half this diode will not conduct for the positive half diode will not conduct during negative half it is a closed switch diode will when it is a closed switch input will come to the output okay so since we see negative voltage we will take 1 by 2 this 0.318 vm so dc is 6.36 v minus 6.36 v see because the peak value vm is 20 here the vm for this problem is 20 so this is your vm peak value we we'll look at the practical diode A practical diode. What I said earlier, a practical diode. I have taken a silicon case. Silicon case means there will be a voltage drop of 0.7. So instead of output the peak value of minus 20, it will be uh, it will be reduced by 0.7 volt. That is 19.3 volt. So VDC is equal to minus 0.31 AB and minus VT. Since silicon diode, I take the VT value as 0.7. Okay. This is your Okay, so I can give what is the name? Can I give a name for this circuit? This circuit is a negative half wave rectifier. Negative half wave rectifier. You can see the output waveform is only a negative half. Okay. Next, we move into the full wave rectifier. Full wave rectifier of two types. First is a bridge type. Another is the center type transformer type. We will start with the bridge type. in bridge type we will be having four diodes this is the vi is a sinusoidal signal positive half and negative half are given to the input right okay this is the setup d1 d2 d3 d4 i have to connect the diode as given in this circuit okay and the output this is the this point i will take the output that is my resistance r okay this is my v0 now during the positive half cycle what is the positive half cycle between the time 0 and t by 2 0 and t by 2 the in uh, this we say positive half cycle During positive half cycle, if you observe closely, is clearly mentioned here. Only the diode D2 and D3 will be on. D1 and D4 are off. D2 and D3 are on. D2, D1 and D4 are off. Okay. So um, why it is on and off? Okay. Observe closely that I have given already very clearly that the anode should be positive when compared with the cathode. Our anode anode voltage should be greater than the cathode voltage, right? So for a positive half, here it is positive, here it is negative. Okay, because the input waveform is positive half. The input waveform is positive. This is a positive half cycle. Okay. For a positive half cycle, if you observe closely, here it is plus and minus. This is the cathode. Cathode is getting a positive potential, so this diode is off. Here this is anode positive, so this diode is on. Here cathode cathode is there. Cathode is seeing what potential? So this is anode. Anode is seeing a yeah, negative potential. So this is also off. This cathode is seeing what potential? Negative. So this is on. Okay. For the diode to conduct, anode should be connected to positive. Cathode should be connected to negative. Keep this in mind. Okay. Keep this in mind. Then you can understand out of the four diodes, what are the diodes should be conducting? Okay, positive. This is your anode, positive. So this is on. Negative. Cathode is negative, so this is also on. Okay, this is anode negative, so this is off. This is cathode positive, so this is also off. Okay, so during positive half cycle, diode D2 and D3 are on, so they are act as a closed switch. I have made a closed switch. Diode D1 and D4 are off. I made it as an open switch. Okay, so the current will be flowing in this way. The flow of current will be from the circuits from the VI to D2, then through the R, then through D3, then to the minus terminal. Okay, so this is the flow. 
So we can see it is flowing in this way. When Va is changing, V0 is also changing the same fashion, right? So positive signal if you give positive half of the cycle, output is also positive half. Next we will see the negative half cycle. What is the negative half cycle duration? It is between the time t2 and t by 2 and t. The time is between t by 2 and t. This is the negative half. During negative half, it is very clear, here it is positive, here it is minus. Okay. So, what are the diodes will be conducting? It is quite opposite, um, like I can say, diode D1 and D4 will conduct, diode D3 and, uh, D, uh, D3 and D2 are turned off. Okay, D, D1 and D4 are on, that means they are conducting, they will conduct. Okay, so these two diodes are, that is your D2 and D3 are off, right? The same explanation you can apply here, right? Because it is positive here, positive here, this diode is on, so it will conduct. Negative here, negative at this point, so this diode is cathode, so D1 will conduct. Okay, so D4 and D1 will conduct, so the current will flow from positive to D4 through the resistance, through the diode D1 to the minus. Okay, so for a negative half also, the current is flowing in the same direction. If you observe closely the R, in R if you observe the R in the positive half cycle, it is how the current is flowing. It is flowing from the right to left, right to left. During negative half cycle also, current is flowing from right direct right to left. So that is why the output V0 is also positive for the negative half cycle. It is flowing in the same direction as the positive half cycle. Okay. So when the input is positive also, output is positive. When the input is negative, output is still positive. So for both the cycle, half, positive half and negative half, I will get the output only in positive half. That is why it is called as full wave bridge rectifier. Okay, so this is the input waveform. For positive half, we get the positive waveform. Even for negative half, I still get the positive waveform. This is a full wave rectifier. Okay, here the VDC is 0 0.61, 0 0.636 VM. We will see it how, right? Uh, generally, I said, what is VM by pi? VM by pi is the DC value of half wave rectifier, half wave rectifier output. Okay, for a half wave rectifier output, how it will be? I'm going to draw it again. For half wave rectifier, it will be like this. Right? If you compare both the waveforms, compare both the waveforms, what you can infer? It is only positive. Two cycles are there. Here, only one cycles are there. Right? So, for this, for half wave rectified, what is the DC value? It is Vm by pi. It is Vm by pi. So, since it is two times, this waveform is two times of this waveform, right? So, 2 into Vm by pi, Vm by pi, uh, v, 1 by pi is 0 0.318. So, 2 into 0 0.318 is 0 0.636 Vm, 0.636 Vm, okay? I am not going to derive it, but I can help you with the previous derivation. The small change you have to make, you go to the previous slide, where it should derive for the higher rectifier. Yeah, it's here, right? Observe very closely. I have returned for, I return for half wave rectifier. Okay, here for, for half wave T by 2 to T is 0. But for a full wave rectifier, it is still Vm, Vm sin omega naught T. It's Vm sin omega naught T. If you proceed, instead of 0, if you put Vm sin omega naught T, then substitute the limits, you will get the answer as 2 Vm by pi. You will get the answer as 2 Vm by pi. That is your point. 6, 2, in 636, 2 times of 0 0.318 Vm. Okay, this you keep in mind, right? This you have to derive by yourself. Use the half a rectifier derivation. <coughs> Instead of uh, 0 here, we will be having Vm by sin omega naught t. Derive it. The answer will be like 2 Vm by pi. The answer will be 2 Vm by pi or 0 0.636 Vm. Okay. Right. Now we will see the effect of cutting voltage. We have taken ideal diode means the, the cutting will just say it is a closed circuit. They will act as a closed switch. Practically, I have said that the diode have, will have a voltage of silicon diode means a threshold voltage of cutting voltage of 0.7. 
okay so if you write kvl for this loop right so it is minus vi plus vt plus v not again plus vt so minus vi plus vt plus v not plus vt kind of voltage law for this loop so v not is equal to vi minus 2 vt so output is equal to input voltage minus 2 times of cutting voltage so if you take the peak value of vi that is your vm peak value of the input voltage is vm so the output voltage peak value is vm minus 2 times cutting voltage okay right this is the wave form this small offset missing wave part is due to the cutting voltage ideally this is a closed switch means simply i can say output is equal to input for the positive half but practically what is there there will be small voltage drop during forward bias okay so add that i will be getting v not v not peak output peak value is equal to v not minus 2 vt so this is the effect of cutting voltage we will ignore the effect of cutting voltage normally right but theoretically we are studying those things right an important thing if vm is very large okay so i can ignore suppose assume vm is very small okay we suppose the peak value of the input signal is like 5 volt vm is 5 volt so if you using silicon diode vt is 0.7 so the, what is the peak value of the output v not is equal to 5 minus 0.7 into 2 1.4 will get 3.6 volt in this case i cannot ignore vt because input voltage is only 5 volt assume vm is 50 volt again vt is only 0.7 So what is V not? 50 minus 2 times of Vt. That is 1.4. That is 48.6 volt. Okay. So if you observe closely, the input is being 5 volt, 3.6. See, for a 5 volt, there is a drop of 1.4. 50 volt, the drop of 1.4 is very small. 50 is very closer to 48.6 compared with 5. Very not that much closer to 3.6. The percentage change is very large. okay if the input voltage is very small definitely i should not ignore the threshold if input voltage is very large i can ignore that okay this you keep in mind okay now what about the peak inverse voltage when these diodes are conducting okay these diodes are open the voltage drop at this point ideally is vm so the peak inverse voltage should be greater than the vm this is called the bridge type full wave rectifier next we will take the full wave rectifier using center trap transformer center trap transformer okay so this is your center trap transformer why it is called center trap transformer if you observe closely this is called primary this is secondary at the center there will be a connection okay if a transformer is having three terminals at the secondary side we will say as a center trap transformer and observe closely the turn turns ratio is 1 is to 2 1 is to 2 means if i given vi if i give it will be two times at the secondary okay since i am taking a center trap transformer this this is vi between this point and this point it is vi similarly between the center trap and this bottom bottom terminal it is also vi that is the voltage relation at the secondary of the center trap transformer with respect to the input to input voltage okay so if i give vi here and here it is vi here and here it is um, middle to center terminal and the bottom terminal it is vi okay now uh, i'm doing positive half cycle what is a positive half cycle between the time 0 and t by 2 okay, during positive half this is the positive half here this is the positive half here right if you observe this diode d1 diode d1 will have a positive voltage so it will contact but if you look at the Uh, diode D2, it is seeing what potential? Minus potential. So it is a open circuit. Anode is seeing minus the minus potential. So it is open circuit. So the D1 will contact D2 is half. D2 is half. That is, is open circuit. So it is not contacting. Okay. Right. So uh, the current will flow this way. So output V0 is equal to VI. V0 is equal to VI. next look at the negative half cycle negative half cycle is this negative half cycle it is minus plus here minus plus here right minus at the upper terminal plus at the center terminal similarly with respect to the bottom terminal 
bottom trim is positive and the center trim wheel is negative. When the bottom trim is positive, this diode D2 will conduct. When the upper trim wheel is negative, diode D1 is off. When the diode D1 is off, there is no conduction, so it is open circuit. When it is positive, current will flow in this direction. So for both the positive half and negative half cycle, the current is always flowing from right to the left side. Right to the left side is flowing in the same direction. So the output will be always positive even for the negative half of the input. Okay. So this is a full way rectifier using center type transformer. For positive half, I will get positive. For a negative half, I will still get the positive half, positive way form at the output. Next important thing is what about the peak inverse voltage? Peak inverse voltage is it is very important. Two times of Vm, right? Assume here they are taking the negative half cycle. Okay, the negative half cycle is being here. During negative half the diode D2 is conducting, so the voltage drop at this point is Vm. The maximum voltage drop at this point, this is Vm means it is conducting in the voltage drop at this Vm. And this voltage is already, it is always Vm. Okay, so what is the voltage at the diode D1? D1 is this Vm plus another Vm. Okay, this Vm is due to the uh, lower half of the center type transformer conduction. Diode D2 conduction. This Vm is already there, always there. Okay, so Vm plus another Vm plus another Vm is equal to 2 Vm. So peak inverse voltage should be greater than 2 times of peak voltage Vm. This is for the center type transfer. This is a very important difference between the bridge type and the center type transfer. Bridge type peak inverse voltage is greater than Vm. For center type type peak inverse voltage is greater than or equal to 2 times of Vm. Then what are the other differences? In a bridge type, we need four diodes. In a center tap type, transformer type, we need only two diodes. Okay. That there is a no need for transformer in bridge type. In center type transformer, we need to purchase this. This, this is quite expensive. Center type transformer, we have to purchase. Okay. Then peak inverse voltage, we have to have a diode such that whose peak inverse voltage is greater than that of two times of Vm. These are the important differences between um, full wave bridge rectifier and full wave center tap transformer rectifier. Okay, right. So now I put a general question which is a better rectifier, half wave or full wave? Of course, yes, it's a full wave because half wave will have only a part of the input will come to the output, but a full wave it is, I can see a full wave output will be like this when compared with the half wave. Okay, moreover. The DC voltage of the full wave waveform is 2 Vm by pi, or I can say 0.636 Vm. More DC value is there when compared with half wave. Half wave will have only Vm by pi. Here it is two times of half wave. So full wave rectifier is much better than your half wave rectifier. Okay. Hope you enjoy the class. Wish you a happy learning. Do subscribe the channel. Thanks for listening. जय हिंद